Hi, I'm Nancy Rayner. I'm here to give a review on the Zen Art Supplies uh, 17 Synthetic Artist Brush Set. And I've been a fine art painter for many years. I have a wide variety of brushes, but none from this company. They gave it to me for free for a review, and I'm excited about trying them out for the first time with you here. So let's get started. Uh, first of all, I wanna say that this set, I went online and the set normally costs $39.95, $40 of US dollars. And it was on sale when I went on to look at it. Um, that's a pretty good price for a set of 17 brushes. Now, I own a lot of brushes, most of which I've bought individually. The range of price went from, or goes from about $3 for my cheapest brush to about $30 for my more expensive brushes. I do have a couple of brushes. One's $100, I wanted to try it out. Um, it's very large, so the larger, the more expensive. Um, there's other factors that create prices for brushes, such as the um, type of material that's used for the bristles, whether it's natural, like sable would be very expensive, or synthetic. And I, these are synthetic, so they're gonna be less expensive, but this is still a really good deal. So 17 brushes for about $40 on sale or $50, um, that's about, <laughs> the top of my head, it's about, that's under $4 a brush, so that's pretty good. I think that um, sets are really a great way to save money for paint sets, uh, palette knife sets, and brush sets. So here it is, I'm opening the box. By the way, here is the box. Taking stuff out here. Um, just wanna make sure I have it right side up. <laughs> Here's the box, and it comes with some papers. I don't know what they are, cards, promotional stuff. And here it is nicely wrapped in bamboo. Now, um, when you get sets, they're often wrapped in uh, these kind of nice uh, portfolio folders. I never use them. Uh, you could use them, I guess, if you're traveling, then it keeps the brushes from bending at the bristles. Uh, you don't wanna just carry brushes and just stick them in your suitcase or the bristles will get bent. So this is a good way to travel with it. But what I do is I just stick them in a jar or a mug so that I can have easy access to them. So here is, they've got these silica pieces in there. Um, here's the set. Looks like a nice variety of brushes. Now brushes come in three general types, round, uh, talking about the shape of the bristles, uh, round, flat, and filbert. So round would be like this, <laughs> flat is like a squared off. And if you picture the square off slightly curved at the corners, that's a filbert, almost like a in between a round and a flat. So it looks like we've got a nice uh, variety here. I'm gonna pull them all out. Oh look, there's a palette knife that came with it. Palette knife, a flat knife for stirring, I guess. Oh, there's some interesting things in here. <laughs> but I didn't expect. I'm pulling them all out of these um, nice little, again, it's a nice case, but I only use them if I'm traveling. Otherwise, if they're here, they take up a lot of space on my painting table and also too much work to put them in and out while I'm painting. So I'll put this off to the side. It does come with the set. So we have a variety of brushes here. Um, there are two that... Um, Let's see if I can put some paper behind this so you can see it. These two are rubber shaper tools. They're not really brushes like you would traditional brushes with bristles. They have um, rubber shaper tips to them and they're really good. I'll show you how I use them with a thick acrylic. Now I'm an acrylic painter. These brushes are for water-based uh, medium. That would be gouache, watercolor, and acrylic. Uh, I think that's the only three I can think of off the top of my head. Um, uh, water, so these will work with all three of those. I'm gonna show you how I use them with acrylic and I'll test them with acrylic. Um, the nice round brushes come with a little plastic protector of which um, I probably won't keep. 
But again, if you're traveling, well, if you're traveling, you put them in that in that bamboo uh, set. So the round ones to protect it, they put these plastic things off. So I'll take that off. Um, so we've got the two rubber shaper tools, the one palette knife, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So there's really only 14 brushes and two of the shaper tools and one palette knife, even though they say, well, they say 17 synthetic artist brush set. Okay, so it's still being honest. Um, but 14 brushes. So the first thing I want to show you is that um, companies will coat the brushes with a glue or a soap or something to keep them hard. This is hard, really stiff and hard. Don't flip out. Um, that's just how they ship them to protect them. So the first thing we're going to do, let's see, these don't have it on them. So just the round ones. I'm going to I have a bucket of water here. I'm just gonna dip them in water and I, I jam them. A lot of watercolors, they just kind of play in the water. I jam them all the way to the bottom of the bin. Now, good brushes should be able to handle jamming them into the bottom and now it's nice and soft. So that's what I'm gonna do with all the brushes that are, and I'm wiping the water off here, just to get them going. They have some kind of, light coating on them to keep them, uh, this one doesn't. So just the, this one doesn't either. Just the rounds, it looks like they have this coating on them. Uh, let's see, ooh, look at this. These are some nice, uh, this is a point, a point, like a, what do you call it, a pointer? I don't know, there might be a specific name for it, but um, it's not a round, a flat, or a filbert, like I said, it's kind of a, it has a special name, but I'm sorry, I don't know that name right now. Okay, so here we go. Um, so let's look at the three categories. This is a flat. You can see it's really uh, cropped off at the top there. It's a flat. This is a round. Let's see if I can find a bigger round. Oh, that's the biggest. Uh, then we have a filbert. Let's see if I can find one. I don't see a filbert here, um, but I do see this is a fan brush or a blending brush for blending two couple colors together or smoothing out areas. Um, this is just kind of a fluffy flat one. Um, I like these though, I don't have many of these. This has like a nice point. So I'll uh, try different lines with these. Okay, so I'm gonna take them all and put them all in my mud for easy access here they are nice set now the largest brush we have is this one which is um i'm going to measure it with a ruler it's one and a half inch wide um and flat so this is going to be a good brush to apply primers sealers uh large background areas if this is the largest brush you have then the this is probably the biggest size you can work on with this set. Now, if you will have large paintings, like say the one behind me or even larger, you're gonna need larger brushes, like three or four inch brushes to put your big, bold um, brush strokes on. And then you can still use this set for the details, for the smaller areas. But if this is all you have, then this is gonna be about, um, Let's see, this is about nine inches by 12 inches, I think, let me check. Yes, this is nine inches by 12 inch. This is a canvas pad. It's paper that's um, coated in a plastic uh, acrylic coating. And um, you could still do nice coats with this, but if you go larger, you are gonna need, in addition to the set, some larger brushes. Okay, so let's try them out. Now, um, the way that I test brushes is um, to test their quality. Really, I'm looking for three things. I'm looking for how it handles with your hand, the actual handle, how the shape and the quality of the bristles um, act when you try to lay out paint. And the third is important, that is how they hold up after lots and lots of washings and use, and you can, see how before I jam them into the bottom, which is really what you need to do with acrylic paint. Again, watercolor, you can be more delicate, but acrylic, 
it's going to um, hang out in the what in the um, <laughs> keep using this here. Here's where the um, base of the brush is, and here's where the bristles are, and right where they connect, it's called the ferrules. I think I'm pronouncing that right where the bristles go into the brush itself. Um, that's where the acrylic sits and it, it, it will ruin your brushes if you don't clean them correctly. So to be fair to the company, the, the um, bristles should stay in really good shape if you um, clean them correctly. And I'll show you that at the end of my review, how I clean my brushes and keep them clean. But watercolorists they don't have to worry watercolor is always resoluble you can always after it's been sitting out for a while you can get the paint off easily with acrylic i'm going to be keeping it in the water the whole time jamming it into the bottom to get the paint out of the furrows and when i clean it i'm going to be jamming it into a a, a bar of soap so i'm really going to be working this brush that's how i um tell that's why i said it was very important how does the brush hold up after all of that abuse? And good brush should be able to, to handle that. So let's just check out the first two, um, how it holds in my hand, how it feels, how it lays out paint. And the third aspect of how it holds up after time, I will have to be able to um, use them for a couple of months to, to check it out. I went online and it said something like, it's uh, the short handles make it easy to handle. and. I don't quite understand that because uh, there's a very specific reason for short handles. Short handles are for when you're sitting and painting and the long handles, let me go grab a long handle brush to show you the difference. There's a long handle brush. These are meant for when you're standing and painting. So here's the difference. Here's a long handle brush and here's what they are offering in this set is short handles. So again, is it easy to does the short handle make it easier to apply? I don't think so. The reason a short handle makes it easier to apply if you're sitting, and this makes it easier to apply if you're standing. Because if you're sitting and using the long ones, you're gonna poke your eye with the long handles. If you're working on a large painting or on, a can, on an easel, you need to have space between you and the painting, and that's why you have the long handle. So that's the difference in handles. This set is meant for sitting and for working in small areas or working, or sorry, small surfaces or working in small areas on a larger painting. Okay, so uh, let's start with acrylic. Now there's three types of acrylic. There's actually more than three, but three basic types that I want to experiment with, with the, um, with the brushes. This is a fluid paint. Um, it's pretty liquidy. It sort of runs out like honey. It's not super uh, liquidy. This one on this side is more liquidy. It's called a high flow and you've got to shake it. You can hear a ball in there. You got to shake it till you hear that ball. There's a little silver ball in there and <laughs> it separates. So you've got to shake them hard. So I'm shaking it a lot. And the other kind on this side is thick paint and it's usually in tubes or jars and it's called heavy body paint. So heavy body, fluid, and high flow. I'm gonna start with the heavy body. So I'll put these off to the side and I'm gonna squeeze it out, grab my pliers. Sometimes the paints get hard if I haven't used them in a while. This is called cobalt turquoise. It's by Golden. It's a thick paint. You can see it's pretty thick. I'm holding it up, hold it upside down. It doesn't move. <laughs> a lot of people like to use palette knives with this. Now, this comes with these interesting shaper tools. I think I'll try it with these two. Um, so let's start with a round and I'm gonna take this um, paint. You can see it's really globby there and I'm gonna move it around. Um, brush feels good, um, handles nice. And I'm gonna try the, now when you wanna switch brushes, it's a good idea to wipe off the paint on the paper towel. It's better for your water system. And I'm gonna jam it in the water. Like I said, jam it onto the bottom and leave it in there. You don't wanna work with your brushes full of acrylic paint and leave them out. That's a good way to ruin your brushes. So, um, 
going to try flat. I like flats. Um, so this thick paint, here's a nice flat line. And then I'm going to try something called dry brush, which means like using the brush in a dry, you're really pressing the brush down into the paper. Again, I really abuse brushes because that's what they're for. We're supposed to be able to handle our brush and the paint in a lot of different ways and not just be delicate and careful with them. So, so far, this is, uh, these work pretty good. Again, I'm gonna wipe the paint off and stick it in here. The, the shaper tools are interesting. Let's try that. Um, here we go with, you could do these interesting lines. You can also scrape back areas of the, the things that you're working with. So if you have two colors, let me grab another color and try to sh and show you what um, show you a little trick. Here's a cadmium red light in the thick paint because it's in a tube, and I'm just going to put that over here. Second, usually I use a palette. That's why I have the plates, but I'm just putting it right on the paper here. Now. Um, I'm gonna try that knife here. Here's a knife, nice mixing knife. Now I'm gonna take the red and put it on top of this with the knife. And I can scrape back with the knife. So knives are good to have in a set. And I can also apply it with these rubber shaper tools get some interesting effects and also scrape through. So the knife and the and the um, rubber shaper tools are really fun to play with to create interesting textures to double layer like I just did a wet color on a wet color and also to scrape back. So you can apply paint and you can remove it with these um, a little easier than you can with brushes. I'm gonna leave those in the water too. And let's see, let's try to water down the paint. I'm gonna add some, again, I'm jamming it into the bottom. I've got some water on my brush. I'm gonna try watering down the paint. These feel pretty good. Let me switch paper and, um, try doing something lighter. They, they act pretty good and they spring back to their shape pretty well. I like these. Um, I'm gonna try the other uh, paints, the fluid paint. Here is, um, let's see if you can see, I'll put it on this one. You can see it's really different than the thick paint. It's, uh, it moves slowly like honey as compared to this is the high flow. Okay, look at the difference of the fluid and the high flow. See how fast it runs down? This is like water. Um, so I'm gonna try both of these. Here's the um, high flow. They were formerly called airbrush colors, very thin so they could go through airbrush and they reformulated it. And here's the, to call it high flow. It goes through graffiti tools and things like that. Um, making a mess over here already. Okay. Oh, by the way, paper towel is another way to handle paint, um, but that's not part of the um, <laughs> review here with the brushes. Okay. So let's try, I'm going to try one of these interesting looking brushes that have the, um, they have a point. Um, usually with acrylic, you want to wet the brush and then wipe the water off on paper towels. So you're really just dampening the brush rather than adding water into your paint. And the reason you want to do that is because when you clean the brush, if you dampen it before you dip it into the color, it'll make it uh, easier to release the color and keep your brushes clean. So let's try the, um, the high flow first. Boy, that's, oh wow, look at this brush. So if you manipulate it, you can get um, some really beautiful variety in your, in your brushwork. Let me see if I can do this up here. 
So like I'm, uh, what I'm doing is I'm holding it very lightly and I'm turning it. And because it's got the point on one side and a flat on the other, you can get this really nice variety of, of um, brushes, almost like Zen um, brushwork, creating those beautiful lines in um, Chinese paintings. Okay, and here's the fluid paint. Uh, also lovely with this with these interesting brushes that have the point and the and the flat. So there you go. My review in this short time using these brushes is I like them. I like the price of the set is great. You get a really nice variety. I think it's nice that they threw in uh, the the knife and the um, two rubber shaper tools. I like the variety of um, brush shapes. That's nice. And the synthetic is good. Um, you don't have to worry about expensive sable brushes that some uh, watercolorists enjoy, but you don't need that with acrylic. And we tried it with the high flow fluid and the thick paint and tried some different um, variations in brush stroke. I promised I'd show how to clean the brushes, very important. And that um, will show you whether these brushes will last for a long time. But so far they feel really good in my hand. What you wanna do is you wanna to go to a sink. I'm just gonna show you here. Here's a bar of ivory soap. I like a bar of soap um, rather than liquid soap. I'm gonna take the brush and I'm gonna jam it all the way. I don't know if you can see that here, let's see. I'm jamming it so that the furls, that place right between the bristles and the brush, get the soap in it. I'm grinding it into the soap then with, I like gloves because if I'm washing 20 brushes, it kind of abrades my hand, but you want to go in to your hand like this. Again, I'm really abusing the brush because I want to get the acrylic out from right there at that, those ferrules. Then I rinse it under the clean water under the sink and I repeat that two more times. So three times all together. The reason I do that is because, I'm going to put it in here so I remember to do that after the review. The reason I do that is because sometimes with acrylic, you're using uh, a medium that's clear. If you try to clean it so that it looks clean, you might be missing out on some clear acrylic that's stuck in those pearls. So I do it three times. And then actually, if you wanna really take care of your brushes, you want to lay them flat or on a slight angle. Uh, my sink has a little bit of a bump there so it's on a slight angle so any water will run off and um, not get stuck into the ferrules there. Um, you want to lay them flat until they dry so you can also lay them you know on anything flat like this. Uh, then when they're dry you just grab them and stick them back in your jar. So that's my review and I hope that helps. I, In conclusion I recommend getting this set. It's a really nice set. I'm glad I have it and uh, thanks for joining me. Oh, and also any information, uh, links to purchase, uh, information about the brushes that I didn't put in this video, I will list in the information text below. Happy painting.